The following content is provided by MIT OpenCourseWare under a Creative Commons license. Additional information about our license and MIT OpenCourseWare in general is available at ocw.mit.edu. Today I'll begin by talking about a subject that we were just getting to at the end of class last time, and that will be electrolysis. And uh, this is an interesting, interesting topic. One of the examples of electrolysis that is commonly used is that which forms the basis for the so-called Dow process. Here what I'm representing is a container, uh, and a container that would be used to house molten magnesium chloride. So if you take magnesium chloride, which is a, a typical salt, and get it hot enough, then it will become liquid. And when it becomes um, liquid in the melt, what you can do is uh, carry out a non-spontaneous reaction by applying an external voltage. So um, the idea is that uh, this, this is some supply, some source of a potential difference, and you can take a positive electrode and a negative electrode and immerse it into the melt, and if the potential is sufficiently great, you can force a non-spontaneous reaction to run, because overall, the reaction will be spontaneous when you factor in the potential difference of the external source. And uh, in this particular case, the reaction that would be taking place uh, is as follows. Uh, at one side, we would have magnesium 2 plus ions being reduced to, at this temperature, uh, liquid elemental magnesium, so metallic magnesium at one electrode. And at the same time, at the other electrode, what would be taking place is the oxidation of chloride ions, which are two of which counterbalance the magnesium 2 plus in the salt magnesium dichloride. And we put in a couple of electrons, um, sorry, we're oxidizing chloride to Cl2, which would be bubbling out as a gas at the temperatures of this melt. So you have, you initially would have this molten salt, you'd immerse your two electrodes, you'd apply an external potential, and if that potential is great enough, then these two reactions start taking place at the two electrodes. And you can see that in order for this uh, to happen, uh, chloride is being oxidized, and so um, we can see then that this must be the source of uh, the positive end, the positive electrode and electrons will be going this way and going down here, and when they collect in this electrode on the left, they are used to reduce magnesium 2 plus to liquid magnesium. So that's an electrolysis uh, reaction in which something that doesn't want to happen namely uh, the reduction of magnesium 2 plus to magnesium 0 by chloride ions, that's non-spontaneous and we're forcing it to happen by applying this external potential. And just how great must that external potential be? Well, uh, Christine, could you locate for me on the table there um, the potential for magnesium 2 plus plus two electrons going to magnesium and the potential for Cl2 plus two electrons going to two Cl minus. 
Note that our standard potentials that we defined last time relative to the standard hydrogen electrode are always written as reduction potentials by convention. So, um, could you, what's, what is it here? We, can we, um, well, can we zoom in on it? <laughs> zoom in on your finger? Okay, by the way, I, I, I had her do this in part because I wanted to draw your attention to this table that is in one of the appendices of the textbook. So it's in the back. There's an there's a abbreviated form of this table right in chapter 12, which you should be reading. But when you want to find a, a standard potential that's, um, uh, that's not in that abbreviated table, you will now know that you can go to your appendix uh, to find that reduction potential. So... Christine, please read out to me the value for the chl chloride. Is that the one you have there? Yep. Plus, plus 1.36. Okay. And um, this is positive of the standard hydrogen electrode, showing you that Cl2 is an oxidizing substance. And then what about the magnesium plus two electrons? It's minus 2.36. Remember I mentioned last time that elemental sodium was around minus 2.7 volts, so it was a very strong reducing agent. Magnesium is also a very strong reducing agent. Chlorine is, is an oxidant, so clearly the direction of spontaneity in this system is for magnesium metal to be reducing Cl2 to make chloride ions, and that's why the form of the salt that Henry Dow, as a young, young man, was extracting from the, the uh, briny marshes uh, near his home in Michigan and later founded the Dow Company on the basis of chemistries like this. Uh, that's how you found it as magnesium 2 plus Cl2 2 minus. And uh, so overall, if you, re you reverse the sign of, of the anode reaction and add it to the cathode reaction, you're going to see that this one is downhill, sorry, non-spontaneous. Uh, by an absolute magnitude of two of three point seven two volts, which is this difference between these two values, this absolute difference in potentials. So that means that we're going to have to apply an external voltage of greater than three point seven two volts positive in order to get this thing to run and to be able to get gaseous CL two bubbling out, and in order to get liquid molten magnesium to be formed and separating from the mag molten magnesium chloride. So that's a, a large external potential. That's the price that you have to pay to make this non-spontaneous reaction go. And that's the minimum price. If we could just um, briefly switch to the uh, Athena from the document camera. Um, I want to I mention this one word over potential. You'll see an explicit definition of the word over potential given in my notes and in your book. But what, it, what over potential is, 